right. Good morning. You may take a seat. Love that you're connecting with one another. This is so good. In fact, just a reminder that one of the reasons, probably the biggest reason we do that is that so that we're reminded we're here together with one another as the body of Christ. You are not just attenders to some Sunday morning church event. You are members of the body of Jesus. If you're following after Jesus, particularly if you're, you've made Heritage Church your home uh, or you've been coming for some time, I just want to encourage you to, with this reminder that, that we are connected to one another through the Holy Spirit that's in us, uh, through Jesus Christ, our, our common Savior and Lord. And that this is more than just attending. We are called to belong here together. And um, that's really what we're talking a lot about this, uh, this summer. And so the people that you're with, unless, uh, you know, unless you're visiting and you're, you're checking things out, like this is your church. These are, these, this is the church body. This is your church. Um, and whether you're online right now or here in person, um, this is who we are. And uh, it's been interesting, hasn't it? Uh, I keep using the term tilling. God is tilling the church. Uh, if you know what tilling looks like, it's the soil, you know, that, that, that you use a machine or, you know, if you use a pickaxe or something and you kind of churn the soil over and I, I, God's doing something in his church. And so, you know, um, the, the, the faces of our church have changed a lot over the year, but I'm really, really excited about what God has for us in the future in this new, new season of ministry. So if you're here and you feel like a new person, uh, you feel like you're the only one who doesn't know anybody else, you're wrong. Uh, there are plenty of people here who are just digging in and just diving into things uh, and of course, it's summer, so, you know, people who are more sensible than us are gone right now, and, you know, this, this week, guys, you know, I, I need to, I have to, make a, I have to make a yearly promise to you all that I'm not going to complain about the heat, and so here it is once again, I need you to help keep me accountable to that, because like it or not, this is where we live. Um, so we're in this One Another series. We started last week with Love One Another, and today we're, we're moving on and we're continuing in this with, with uh, harmonize with one another. To, uh, the Bible talks about living in harmony with one another. Um, one of the things that you may or may not know about me is that I love music. Um, I can't really play any kind of music or anything, and my singing voice is meh, but I l- absolutely love music I have ever since I was a kid, and I love, I love, I love it all. Uh, I love pop music, I love hip-hop, uh, rock and roll, uh, anywhere f- anything from classical to punk, country, eh. like modern country I'm out on, but like the older stuff, like that stuff is like, you know, that, that stuff pulls at my heartstrings, especially all of this if it's on vinyl. Uh, so I, I really do. I love, absolutely love music. But my all-time favorite band is the Beatles. Uh, ever since I was about 16, I somehow came, a, came across the Beatles. And I still remember, like, laying in bed and listening uh, just listening to these songs, and it just, I don't know, it just, it just, uh, it just grabbed me. I just, I love the Beatles, and um, they, they're brilliant musicians. Whether you like them or not, you have to admit that they, uh, they changed the scene of rock and roll music as we know it, um, even to this day, uh, and one of the things that they do really well, maybe you don't know this so well about the Beatles, is they harmonize really well. And there's this song on the album Abbey Road called Because uh, that I want to play for you right now. And it's actually a cool track because it's not the, it's not the, it's not the Abbey Road version on, that you have on the album. It's actually just their vocals. Their vo- it's the track where they just recorded the vocals. So uh, at the risk of being a little bit awkward, I'm just going to stand up here and look at you while we all listen to the Beatles for a few seconds together uh, to illustrate just what is harmony in the music world. So hit it, Nate. That is beautiful harmony. And so when the Bible talks about living in harmony with one another, if you were to put what that ought to look like in the church body into musical version, it would sound a lot like that. Maybe the words would be different, right? 
Um, and I'm not an expert on music, and uh, so I've, I, I want to bring up our resident expert, Jason Williams. Would you come on up here, Jay? And we're going to... He's all right. No, no. Come on, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, come on I'm up, Jay. I'm definitely not an expert. Well, okay, so... I'm a, I'm a resident. Talk but... to us a little bit about, like, help, <laughs> help us understand what's going on, like why do we like that, or why do I like that? I'm assuming most people here, at least if you don't like the Beatles, at least you know, like that was beautiful. What's going on there in that? Well, scientifically, <laughs> there's, yes. yeah, hi. there's sound waves that are happening and these harmonies are syncing up with these sound waves to create these different dissonant frequencies Wow. Frequencies that, that, and it's really pleasing to the ear. Yeah. That's why when you have like a chord, you could play two notes and be totally, it would sound horrible. But if you play the right three notes together, it sounds amazing. Yeah. Because they fit together. Okay. So let's talk about fit. We, we've heard about uh, melody and harmony. What's the difference and how do they fit together? Yeah. So melody is what, uh, typically what we all think of when we listen to a song, we hear the melody. I, and it, you know, I listen, you know, whatever song, whatever's your favorite song, you, you hear the melody, you remember the melody, right? Well, harmony is this beautiful thing that if you hear too much of it, it kind of defeats the purpose. Harmony is this thing that kind of comes underneath or over the top and really supports the melody. It's like the supporting structure of the melody. And when there's a harmony that's bomb, like, it makes the melody that much stronger, you know? It just complements so well and it supports so well. So you just said something there about the harmony. You don't necessarily notice it, and you're not really supposed to notice it? Yeah, I, I, I think if you do notice it, like your, your ear is a little bit more tuned to vocals and stuff. Like my wife, Jess, she only hears harmony. Like she doesn't hear, like, like she hears melody. But That's like, like a shirt listen, you should have. I only hear harmony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, we, when, we hear, when we listen to songs <laughs> in the car, she automatically hears, them, hears the harmony and sings the harmony, and that's just like her default. Uh, but most people, if they're not trained vocalists, hear the melody first, and they, they can learn, they can train their ear to hear harmony, and then even train it further to, begin to be able to pick it up, discern it, and sing it. Uh, but that's a whole nother, whole nother game. Uh, but when you hear, just like the sample that we heard, yeah. if it was just Paul singing that, it would sound pretty good. But when you have George, and when you have, who else is singing on there? John. I, th I thought you said Ringo sang it. Ringo on wasn't one. on that one. All right. Yeah. He looks, he's got the tune of a voice. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> when you hear all three of them together, man, it just it comes alive because yeah. it's, it's all supporting that melody. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So to demonstrate, you and I are going to do a little harmony to yeah, boys to go. men. Is here that? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, no. That's all right. All right. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint you. We're not going to sit up here and sing because that would cause too many of you to have like awkward social anxiety if, if, uh, if that were to take place. Um, so that's interesting, fascinating stuff busted out science on me. That's, that's really good. Um, so that's harmony and song, right? We, we kind of grasped that to an extent. Let's talk about harmony now in the Bible with song in mind. And I actually really do, you know, as, as the biblical writers were writing. So in this example, it's Paul. He's writing the book of Romans, which is where we're going to be, and the book of Philippians and, and a bunch of other epistles in the New Testament. Um, he's got all sorts of images in his mind. And sometimes he's talking about the church in terms of a body, like our bodies. And he's talking about hands and eyes and, and feet. And it's all metaphorical. Uh, sometimes he's talking about sports, like racing and wrestling and boxing. And I really do think that uh, when he uses words like harmony and these different concepts, he has song in mind. And so I think we're to have this idea in mind as we talk about now, what is harmony in the church, in the church body, when we're told to harmonize with one another, what is that? And so for that, we're going to go to Romans chapter 12. We're going to keep it really simple today with one verse, although uh, there's, there's lots of places in scripture that we're going to reference a little bit uh, that talk about this concept uh, but I want to camp out here primarily in Romans 12, 16. Um, in this section in Romans, uh, Paul, Paul has, has really just 
explained Jesus throughout Romans and our need for Jesus and what happens when we put our faith in Jesus, that we receive the Holy Spirit. And then these latter parts of Romans, he's talking about now, how do we live then in that truth? In light of the reality of Jesus' death and resurrection and the forgiveness from our sins that we have through his death and resurrection and the Spirit of God that is now in us, empowering us and shaping us, how do we live with one another, right? Right? So, uh, Romans 12, 16, he says, in the midst of all these different ways that we're to live with one another, including love one another, that we talked about last week, he says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Or some uh, uh, translations say, never be wise in your own sight. Live in harmony with one another. Uh, I was doing some research for, for us this week on this word uh, that's translated into harmony from the original Greek. And it's actually, it's a really interesting word because it, it doesn't like just literally mean harmony the way we think of it in musical terms. Uh, it actually shows up a lot in the, in the New Testament here in, in Scripture. And it, it means, it's kind of a complex meaning because it, uh, it's, it's a word that originates in the mind. So it's to think a certain way about something. Uh, the word describes somebody who, who takes a particular interest or has a particular opinion about something or someone and then puts that into action. So it's, right, it's kind of, a, kind of this complex word that's all contained in this one word that we have here translated. Um, and it's, 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 uh, it relates to having an opinion, like I said, an interest, enough to set your affections on that thing. That's a really important nuance to this word, is that we have this affection then towards something. Um, and actually, this is fascinating to me, right here in Romans 12, 16, in this one verse alone, this word in the original Greek, if you were to read this in, in the Greek language, shows up three times. Twice it's identical, one it's a variant of the word, but it's the same word. And it shows up three times. It's translated as harmony, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, same exact word as harmony, only translated because of the context as haughty. And then never be wise in your own sight, same word. Harmony, haughty, wise, same exact word in the original Greek, because they all have to do with setting our mind and our attention, our opinions, and our affections on something or someone. And so you can carry that out then to understand that if we're to live in harmony with one another, it's, it's, it's a mindset where we're setting our opinions, our affections, our attentions on one another, and the, the inverse or the contrast of that would be to be haughty or wise in my own sight and set my opinions, my interests, my affections on myself. Uh, and you really can't harmonize with yourself unless you like lay down tracks and stuff. But, you know, they didn't have that back then. Um, in other places in Scripture, it's translated as same mind. Paul says in Philippians 2.2 2, to be of the same mind, to agree with one another, Philippians 4.2. And it even is translated as concern, to have concern for others in Philippians 4.10. Uh, in fact, this word shows up most, it is smattered kind of throughout the New Testament and other letters, particularly uh, letters that Paul wrote, but it shows up in a saturated way in Romans and Philippians. And so that's helpful to understand that when we go to those particular books, he's talking a ton about what does it look like to live in harmony with one another as a church body. We are not just attenders that we belong here together. So I want to look at this and go, okay, well, what are the notes of harmony? What are the notes of Christian uh, church community harmony? How do we approach the harmony that we're supposed to be singing and the first thing that I want to point out is that our harmony, as we are to harmonize with one another, is determined by the melody, right? That we have this common melody, so think of it in terms of that song, there's this common melody, and then we come together as the church body, and we're to harmonize. 
uh, to that melody. And that melody is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's the good news that Jesus died and rose again, that the Son of God left heaven to pursue us to the ends of the earth, and that in him we have this forgiveness, this restoration with God, and that through him he's restoring all things, and we get to be invited into singing that with Jesus, that that melody that's being sung, that there is a way to know God, that there is a solution, there's an answer to the evil and the sin and the injustices all around us, and it's found through Jesus Christ. That's the melody, and as we are rally around that common song, that melody, we then harmonize together with one another as that melody has been determined by Jesus. In fact, in Romans 15, 5, Paul says that we are to live in accord with Christ Jesus. He's talking about harmony in accord with Jesus. I have to believe he was thinking about song when he wrote that. So Jesus is the melody. He is our common ground. In places like Ephesians 4, Paul just goes off with this word one, that there's one Lord, one Savior, Jesus Christ, one baptism, one spirit, one body, one faith. We are one together, and Jesus is the melody in that. And so in order to sing the notes of the harmony, we have to have agreement. We have to be in agreement with the melody. I mean, Jason even, even pointed out, you can, you can have different, you sing in different keys and it doesn't work because they're not, they're not in agreement with one another. But a good harmony is an agreement with the melody and with one another. It just sounds beautiful together. And so we're to be in agreement, first and foremost, with the gospel of Jesus Christ the fact that, we are, that, 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 that he's established his kingdom here on earth and his kingdom is coming fully when he returns and we get to live in that and we have a responsibility to proclaim that and one of the huge ways that we do that is by singing the song of the, uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ by the harmony that we have with one another. And so there's this agreement. But it's not an easy kind of agreement. It's not that just we, we just agree that, you know, a particular sports team is our favorite. Or, you, you know, harmony doesn't come because you agree with me that the Beatles are the greatest band of all time. That's easy agreement. This is not the easy kind of agreement that the Bible talks about. Because harmony, when the Bible talks about it, it doesn't mean that we see eye to eye on everything. We are to see eye to eye on the important things, like Jesus his identity, who he, who he is, that he died and rose again. But there's lots of other things then that are part of our church community. They're all things that we have to do and decisions we have to make and you know, that, that certainly spill out into the morals and ethics and um, just all sorts of uh, opinions and preferences, all sorts of things. And in the midst of that, we're still to have harmony. In other words, you and I can disagree on a lot of stuff and still live in harmony. In fact, the Bible has to command harmony because this kind of harmony is hard. Philippians 2.2, 2, Paul writes, Agree in the Lord. Agree in the Lord. Start there. Start with the melody of Jesus Christ. And if we have agreement there, then guess what? Harmony is not only possible, it's commanded. We're to live in harmony with one another. And it requires a mindset, doesn't it? For a person to stand up here and sing the harmony, you can't just just jump over to the melody. Like if if, if the worship team is leading here, and and, um, let's, let's say, well, because Jess only hears harmony, right? She's singing the harmony. Jason's singing the melody. She can't just suddenly just start singing the melody. Uh, She could, but it would change the way that the song sounds, right? So we have to have a certain posture, a certain mindset that does not insist on taking center stage, that does not insist on being the one who has to be best and right. 
Paul says this. So, so some of the, here's some of the notes of harmony. Uh, and this, these, are, these are heart postures that we are to have if harmony is going to work in our midst. And I'm talking very, very practically, specifically us, Heritage Church. He says, do not be haughty. In other words, don't harmonize with yourself. Don't think that you're above anyone or anything. Don't think that you're better than others because you see things a certain way and they don't. We're to harmonize with one another. So don't be haughty. Don't think of yourself as better and best, thinking you've got the melody. Find your harmony. Sing your harmony. And the note here is humility. Humility. And humility is not thinking poorly of ourselves. It's not, see, it's not self-pity. It's not self-loathing. But it's also not elevating ourselves. Humility actually comes from thinking rightly about who we are, and that has to come through the lens of Christ. That has to come from the melody. And the melody says that we are made in the image of God and that God has rescued us because he loves us so much. And that he is restoring us if, in fact, our faith is in Christ and, and the Spirit of God is in us. We are sons and daughters of the King. That's where humility comes from. Because if I believe that, I know that about myself, then I can sing the harmony better. I, I don't have to be haughty because I know who God believes me to be. And I believe that about myself. Then he goes on to say, um, to associate with the lowly. Now, um, I, was, I was doing some research on this. We actually don't know what he's talking about. We don't know, uh, g- given the, the, the original structure of the words and, and the sentence structure there in the original language, uh, is Paul talking about associate with lowly people, like people that we would consider kind of on the margins or outskirts? Or is he saying associate with lowly things? So put yourself, put your hands to humble things, people that th- uh, the, the things that other people don't want to do, like cleaning toilets and, and changing diapers and stuff like that, right? Uh, so there's some kind of like, uh, what's he talking about? Well, let's be, let's be honest, right? The Bible talks about both in other places, and so maybe there's a double, a double meaning here, and I, I, I think it's okay to take it as that as we're talking about this, this idea of living in harmony with one another. I think he is talking about people that, that uh, uh, our culture would, would tend to discard, and he's talking about things around us, tasks that need to be done that people don't want to do. Just like in the example of last week when Jesus washed the feet of his friends, the disciples. And the note here is compassion that leads to sacrificial service. Because if we're going to put ourselves to lowly things or we're going to associate, we're going to become friends with people that the world tends to want to ignore or discard. It comes from a place of compassion compassion that's willing to lay ourselves down in love towards the other. We've got to have compassion if we're going to sing in harmony with one another. Maybe this was your experience over the last year as we were kind of, we were separated and quarantined and all of that stuff, is that um, we, and this was my experience too, and I've, I've talked to some of you and it's been your experience as well, we tend to, we, we tend to lose compassion quickly because we start to make up stories about other people in our minds because of certain posts online or, or different things or uh, you know, hearsay and all of that, and, and things get stirred up. And it's amazing how quickly compassion gets taken out of the equation as we make up stories about people in our minds and then put uh, motivations and, and different desires and stuff into their mouths that maybe even aren't there. And that is, the, that is anti-harmony. We're to have compassion for one another. We're to believe the best in one another. And even if we know the worst, there's compassion. We've got to have those notes of humility and compassion. And then he says, never be wise in your own sight. In other words, don't think that you know better. So here's how that would look in, in the context of a song. It's like that kid at a birthday party where everyone's singing happy birthday. He's over here singing jingle bells, right? 
because he knows better. He's wise in his own sight. We tend to do that. We tend to behave as we're the only ones who truly care about this issue or that issue or those people or these people. And then we become wise in our own sight. We're the only ones who have these certain opinions about this, that, or the other thing and how certain things should be done. And so we begin to get out of sync. We get out of harmony because we look down our noses at other people and we're just off here trying to do our own thing. When in reality, we're actually contradicting the melody of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The note here, and I'm going to, it's, it's hospitality, I think. And here's why. There could be other notes, right? I mean, there's all sorts of things that we could talk about here. But, um, and I talked about hospitality this week, and I'm going to beat that drum again this week. We need to know one another in order to harmonize, in order to not look down our noses at others, to be wise in our own sight. And part of that hospitality means listening to other people, asking good questions and listening and getting to know people. It involves having people in our homes. It involves really truly treating people as people and as the body of Christ with whom we get to harmonize. Hospitality. So, those are some of the notes of harmony. I'm certain we could go on and on and on, but that's what I see right here in context in Romans chapter 12, verse 16. So let's start there with humility, with compassion, and with hospitality. So how do we find our harmony? I, I want to I help us just think through real practically here in the, in the last little bit here is, okay, if we're to live in harmony with one another, we know the melody is the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, then what, how do I know how to sing along to that in a way that, 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 uh, that edifies the melody, that edifies uh, one another in those things? And I'm busting out an old youth ministry uh, acrostic here. Maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't. I think it's really, really helpful. Um, but it's the acrostic shape. And it's not very musical, I understand that. It actually has more to do with this concept of the body and how we're all to fit together. Uh, but I, I want to just go through this briefly or, or quickly just to help us understand, like, what, so what is my harmony? What is your harmony? Uh, because we are, God has given us different, uh, he's made us all differently. We're all in his image, but we're all different. And so that's part of the, the beauty, but also the challenge of coming together to be the body of Christ and to, to sing in harmony. So let's start off, shape. The first one, S, is spiritual gifts. If you've put your faith in Jesus, the Bible talks about this all over the place, including Romans chapter 12, that there are gifts given to us by the Spirit of God who indwells us in order to build up the body of Christ, in order to make much of Jesus and to proclaim the good news of the Jesus melody to the world around us. So you and I, we have spiritual gifts that God has given us, and they're not all the same. They've been given through you, not to you. They've been given to the church body. So if you have uh, the gift, a particular gift of service, and you just, like, that's just second nature to you. You just serve really well. You love doing it, and the people around you are so blessed. They see Jesus in you when you do this thing. That's been given, that gift has been given through you to bless the church body, to sing in harmony with the church body. And we have these different gifts, and there's, there's, uh, there's several places in the Bible that talk about these, including Romans 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, in 1 Peter, uh, we, 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 ha we see some of these things, that there's these spiritual gifts that are given to the church body through us. And so some of the examples are things like hospitality, evangelism, leadership, teaching, mercy, exhortation, and the list goes on of these different things, the different gifts that we have. Now, just because we don't have a certain gift doesn't mean that we're still not called to that. I don't have the spiritual gift of service. That doesn't mean that I, that then absolves me of serving at all, right? Like, when you look at the list of spiritual gifts, you go, well, we're all actually supposed to strive for those things. Yes, but God has empowered us through His Spirit 
each of us differently to do some of those particularly naturally and really well for the building up of the body of Christ. Some of these things come really, really easily. And so let me just dive in real quick. How do I know? Maybe some of you are like, well, how do I know what my spiritual gifts are? I actually think you know. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to tell because it's just such second nature. It just, it, it, it is. So what's your natural inclination? In other words, a person with a gift of mercy doesn't have to think about being merciful. A person who doesn't have the gift of mercy has to think about it. They have to choose mercy, right? That's a, it's a discipline for them. But some of you, the gift of mercy just comes out of you, and you just can't even imagine how anybody else could wrestle with having mercy towards other people. There's a good chance you have the spiritual gift of mercy. And then when you exercise that gift of mercy, just in your day-to-day, you're not even thinking about it, people around you are like, wow, that was so profound. It like just affected me deeply, and I see Jesus more now. Thank you. And you're like, what? Yes, that's the spiritual gift that God is using through you to benefit the body of Christ. So so a lot of these are just like, this just comes really naturally to you. You don't even have to think about it. Another way to know that that you have a particular spiritual gift is other people's affirmations. So that's the first place I would go if you're like, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. Talk to another Christian who knows you well, and they'll be able to tell you. Because they've experienced the grace of God through you and the gifts that you're using as you sing in harmony with the melody of the gospel. And then thirdly, there's like tons of assessments. You can go online and take all sorts of different assessments, and those are helpful. I think they'll actually just confirm what you already know. So spiritual gifts. H stands for heart. We all have hearts for things, don't we? These are passions that come out of us. And we don't, have all, we don't all have the same passions, and that's a really good thing. But it's also a really hard thing. Because we're trying to now harmonize with people who don't all have the same passions as we do. And I'm not, I'm not talking about passions like, like things, you know, like, like taco places and music and all that stuff, which are viable passions, believe me. I'm talking more about like, like real like ministry things, like people groups and types of ministry and the different things that God has put on our heart that we're to be passionate about. God has given you particular passions, and it's those things that it gets riled up in you when we have discussions, and it's things like when you see things on TV, you're just like, ah, oh, I've experienced some of your passions come out over the last year, and that's good, and that's awesome. But because we're to live in harmony with one another, we don't all have the same passions. And I think actually this, this, this one, our heart, is where a lot of division can come into the church. Because we assume that everyone else should be as passionate about this or that as I am. I cannot match every person's level of passion for everything in here. Some of you have expected me to do that. I cannot. We're to harmonize with one another. I have certain passions. So for example, I'm not particularly passionate about homeless ministry. I I admit that. Now, I know that God has called us to love the poor and the homeless, and we need to do something about that. But I need some of you who are passionate about that to sing in harmony together and to step up and lead some things as we are to harmonize in the body of Christ. Passions. God has given them to us. And the wrong thing to do with our passions, I think, most times is to go find a dozen or more people who have the same exact passion and then be passionate about that same thing together. And there's nothing wrong with, with getting together with other people who have the same heart. But, but those passions, God has given you those actually to sing in harmony with the body of Christ, to sing in harmony with other people who aren't quite as passionate about it. And guess what? If God has given you a particular heart for something and you don't see anybody else in the church stepping up and doing that thing, it's possible that God wants you to step out and lead that. That's not for, 
for, for me to take on all that. It's not for any one of you to take on all of that. We're to do this together. We are to sing in harmony with one another. You, I, together, we all are singing our own harmony. Jesus is the melody. So he's given us spiritual gifts. He's given us heart. He's given us abilities. These are skills like trades or arts or math, like different abilities that, that we have. What unique abilities do you have that would harmonize well with the church body, that would connect with other people and get them engaged? P is personality. We all have different personalities. This is another really easy one to divide us, right? Some of us are introverts. Some of us are extroverts. Some of us are, 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 are out, outward processors, out loud processors. Uh, uh, some of us are more introspective and pensive. Some of us, um, we resort to anger or withdrawal, like all sorts of different things here. And here especially, we have an opportunity to appreciate the harmony of others rather than jumping to quick judgments about people, listening by getting to know them back to hospitality. And then E is experiences, and this kind of speaks for itself. Some of our passions, our abilities, even our personality are actually born out of our experiences. You bring certain experiences to this church body that God wants to use to harmonize with the rest of us. So, I want to encourage you just to, just to consider, what are these for you? What are your gifts? What's your heart, your passions, your abilities, your personality even, and those experiences that you've had? These are all ways, this is how you find your harmony. And let's be honest here, harmony is really hard. We can't expect everyone else to be singing the same harmony. That would sound weird too. We've all got to be, we've got to find the harmony that meets, that agrees with the melody and the harmony of everybody else. So find your harmony. And this is messy. This is hard. Uh, you know, you ever, you, you've, we've all been riding in the car before and our favorite song comes on and f- somehow we think that we're just really, really great at singing and we try to find the harmony and we're driving along and blah, blah, and it takes a while to kind of get there and then we nail it and we're like, oh yeah, I'm a rock star. <laughs> Everyone sounds amazing in their car. The same is true for the harmony that I'm talking about among the church body. It's kind of messy. Like, you just got to step into stuff and try to kind of and find your harmony with one another. And then be gracious towards one another and compassionate and humble in the process of us finding our harmony together. But it takes time, and it's messy, and it's hard. But that's what we're called to do, and that's why, God, that's why it's been commanded to us to do this. So... Get to know one another. How do you find that? Get to know one another. Like I said earlier, there's lots of people in this room that don't know one another. Let's take that step, that first step towards another person. Hey, like, let's get coffee or you guys want to come over for dinner or let's go grab some lunch after church. Let's do this together. Serve the church body whether it's needs that we have on Sunday morning or needs that we have as it comes to community outreach. And all, there's so many exciting things coming uh, in August as we're looking ahead. You know, summer's kind of weird because people are out and gone and here and there and stuff. And we're still doing some things like summer sessions and volleyball nights to connect and to equip. But we're also looking at some really cool ministry opportunities in the fall. But don't wait around for whoever it is you think should be organizing these things and doing these things, if God's given you a passion and experiences and a personality, like, let's, let's do this. Let's harmonize with one another. He's given you all a personality. So. Serve our community in the city and then pray. We need to be praying and following the leading of the Spirit of God. And when we do this, we need a lot of grace towards one another. Paul, when he's, he's instructing some people in Philippians chapter 4 to get along, figure this out, guys. And he says, he talks about agreeing in the Lord, and he uses this word forbearance. It's this idea that we are to think highly of one another, to think the best in one another, but also to be humble and to serve one another in that process. We need forbearance in this season. 
if we're to harmonize with one another. And as we agree in the Lord, we commit to one another, we sing the gospel song of Jesus Christ, and he is glorified, and the watching world will know that there is a good God and a Savior and Lord Jesus Christ and something deeply profound that keeps us devoted to one another. And so let us turn our attention now to that deeply profound melody that we are all singing along to that unites us, and that's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus crucified and resurrected and coming again to restore all things. And until his coming, we celebrate through communion his death and his resurrection. And so in this time, I just want to just allow some time for some prayer, for the Spirit of God to move in us. How might God be calling you to harmony with one another? And it's got to be, the answers are very practical. It's not conceptual. And as we sit and we consider, let's remember the melody, Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news. The ushers are going to be up here at the front. They're going to be holding the elements. And on your own time, please come forward. Take the cup, take the bread, and go back to your seat. And on your own time, take those. Maybe as a couple or as a family or maybe a group of friends, you want to take it all together and just kind of huddle up and pray together in this time. That's awesome. Uh, if, you, if you want gluten-free or the prepackaged things, we have those off to the sides over here on the pillars. I just want to encourage you to take this time. Let's consider how we are to live in harmony with one another in light of the gospel, the good news. And as you take the bread, remember that it represents Christ's body broken for us and that the cup represents the blood of Christ shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Ushers, would you come forward as I pray? Father God, we want to worship you. And in so doing, we sing the melody of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we hear this call towards harmony and we, we know that it's hard, that it grates against our selfishness, our sin, our agendas, our time, our emotion. But God, you've called us to harmonize with one another. So I pray that you'd give us grace towards one another as you have given us grace. Let us be filled with that same forbearance towards one another. Which we remember now in receiving communion. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.